Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending today's workshop. Today, uh, today's workshop is navigating our MDC databases. My name is Christina Dillon. I am one of the librarians in Learning Resources. I'm located over at the Hialeah campus. Um, today, we're going to go over the databases, a bit of an overview of um, how to use uh, the tools that are available to you on how on narrowing down the results and finding exactly the information you're looking for. I'll also highlight a few of the different databases that we have available to you. And of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to put it in the chat. Um, and that way, at the end, if we have a little bit of time, we can go over exactly um, what you guys are questioning and what you're unclear on, okay? I would like to also have you participate along with me as we do some of our searches on the databases. So if you can, go ahead and open up a browser. And once we get into the step-by-step -step part of the workshop, you guys can follow along and we'll conduct a few searches together. Okay, thank you again. I'm going to stop my video for a moment and we're going to start the presentation. And for those of you that haven't had an opportunity to put your username in the chat, please do so just for attendance purposes. I'll ask again at the end of the workshop. Thank you. I'm also joined today by one of our writing tutors at the Hialeah campus. Her name is Cecilia and she's also gonna be helping me with the chat today. All right, so again, today's workshop is navigating the MDC databases. And just to get a little familiar with you guys, how familiar are you with the databases? Have you used them on a few assignments and feel pretty comfortable with them? Or is this going to be your first uh, look at them? You can go ahead and write it in the chat. That would be totally fine. All right, looks already like we have a bit of a mix um, in the chat so far. We have Alan who wrote that um, they're not too familiar, but we do have someone else who said that they use them quite a bit. Um, so let's see if, you know, some of the information we covered today um, shed some light on some of uh, the, the things that you aren't sure of. Um, and then maybe also adds a little bit of um, information to the skills that you've already developed in using the databases. Okay, so... Today we're going to go over um, kind of like the basic vocabulary because a lot of times we, you know, we're talking about databases and, you know, what is that exactly, right? So we'll go over some of the vocabulary. We'll look at how to access the databases, um, whether you're on campus or at home. Uh, some search strategies. We'll also look at limiters or filters, uh, and that's really going to help you once you are in one of those databases, so you're not spending too much time looking through results that maybe aren't quite hitting the information needs that you went in there with, right? And some of the database tools that are available to you, um, which are benefits to using the databases as well. And lastly, we'll go over some support that you guys have available to you, um, specifically through learning resources. Uh, like I mentioned, I'm one of the librarians here. You have us as a resource, but you also have um, many of our tutors who are well-versed on the databases and can also assist you and um, assist you once you are ready to start writing your papers um, to put down that information that you've located, maybe develop an outline based on the information you've located. So we'll go over that as well at the end, okay? So first of all, you know, what is a database, all right? Um, I pulled this data, this definition from Berkeley College because I felt it was kind of like all encompassing and pretty clear. I'm gonna read through it now. A database, also called an electronic database, is a collection of data or information specifically organized for rapid search and retrieval by a computer. Okay, pretty basic. Um, it is also a searchable electronic index of published reliable resources. So databases provide access to a wealth of useful research materials from academic journals, newspapers, and magazines, as well as ebooks, relevant web resources, and various multimedia. So one thing that I'll highlight um, when we go into the databases is that many of them don't just house or provide access to academic journals. Some of them house access to newspapers specifically, or in addition to those academic journals. Others have ebooks or are solely dedicated to providing access to ebooks. And um, many other ones are a mix of all of these things together, along with web resources, news stories that are on the web, and also various other kinds of multimedia like interviews and videos, um, audio files, things like that. 
right? And also, lastly, the information found in a database is either originally created, and we will go over some of those databases that create their own content, as well as others that find that um, have information that come from different reliable sources, okay? And then we have a little screenshot here of our MDC databases. Uh, we do often sub add a few subscriptions, maybe we remove a few. Um, at the time of the screenshot, we subscribe to 116 databases. I believe we're at 113 currently, but again, that keeps changing. But just so you know, you do have access to 100 and or over 110 databases currently, okay? And through them, each one provides you with access to, again, academic journals, newspapers, videos, audio files, um, documents, infographs, web resources, ebooks, all of these different kinds of resources. So you can imagine how much is available to you um, just by being an MDC student and having that, um, that login and this access. Okay. All right, so some highlights of being able to use the databases and the benefits of the databases is that you'll be able to define the scope. So the databases are highly organized information that allows you to find information with high relevance to search terms. So the benefit of using the databases and when we get into them and start doing the searches, you'll be able to see, um, they have a lot of search terms searching that you can do. You can search by keywords as well. Um, and all of these will be directly tagged with the articles. So the chances of you getting a relevant hint are really high, right? Um, I'll also show you a few tips and tricks on how to better enhance those search um, skills so that the hits that you do get are even more closely tied to exactly what you what you need. So it is important to think really critically of like what you're looking for and what your information need is. Um, so you're not doing too much of a basic search or, or um, a broad search that's gonna produce way too many results that are kind of hitting every possible angle of that topic, right? And that goes into uh, narrowing your search, right? We have a lot of tools through the databases that will help you eff efficiently narrow down your search from all those results that you'll see um, to the most specific ones tied to what you need, all right? Um, a lot of the research uh, and data and information that you find on the databases have been verified. They're, they've been peer reviewed. You can even search specifically for peer reviewed res um, resources. They're high quality content that you can find through the databases. So the need to evaluate the content yourself before choosing to maybe use it as you would if you were searching through Google or just the open internet um, isn't as necessary. So you don't have to spend as much time trying to verify information as you would searching the open internet when you're using a database because of how um, verified and reviewed all of that content already has been, okay? All right, and then this is now getting into actually accessing the databases. So before we get into that, I just wanna check in with you guys. Is everyone good on what a database is and kind of what we're about to get into about just accessing them? I checked on the chat, we don't have any questions, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep going. But again, if along the way you have any questions, just go ahead and put it in the chat um, because I will be pausing to look at it, okay? All right, so this is about how to access the databases. So there's a few different ways that you can do that once you actually get to the page. And again, right after this slide, we'll go, we'll start going through the steps so we can um, do some of these searches in real time and you can get a little bit more familiar with it. But basically to search the data, to access the databases, you will need to, of course, log in, right? You're gonna be using your MDC username and password to log in. And once you log in once to one of those databases or one of our uh, resources available through the collection, you'll be logged in on that browser and you can keep hopping around databases without having to be prompted again to, to um, log in. All right, so one login will give you access to all the databases. And what you'll be able to do is then search the catalog. You'll be able to search through the full list of databases. You will also have the option of searching um, through our journals alphabetically. So remember, the academic journals are accessible through the databases, but if for whatever reason you have a very specific journal or periodical that maybe a professor has recommended or that you're familiar with, or maybe you just want to search by 
the topic or theme that you're um, researching, you could take a look and go straight to the source. Just go straight to that one journal and see what's available there, what was most recently published in that journal um, within maybe the last few years. So that's also an option and we'll look at that too. And then of course, like I mentioned before, we've got your research tools um, that will be available as you start um, doing your search within the databases. Okay, so I'm going to pause for a minute in all of my talking <laughs> and uh, play this quick little video on how to access the databases um, just to kind of give you a little foundation if you're not too familiar so that when we get into doing the searches, um, this is kind of already providing a little bit of a foundation. Okay, so give me one second just to play this and please let me know if you can't hear any sound. Okay. <music> Here's how to access library databases at Miami-Dade College. A database is a searchable online collection of information. More than likely, your professor wants you to use reliable, scholarly resources, and you can find those in the library databases. In fact, all sorts of materials are available, such as academic journal articles, streaming videos, ebooks, audiobooks, digital magazines, newspapers, and more. Begin at www.mdc.edu. Hover over Academics and select Libraries. This is your library menu. Under the search box, look for Databases. You will see an alphabetical list of over 100 databases. You will also notice several drop-down menus that you can utilize to search for databases by subject. By type. By vendor or you can perform a unique search for databases right here. If you know which database you're looking for, such as opposing viewpoints, you can search for it by letter or use the search box. Then click on the database. If prompted for a login, use your MDC username and password. If you're having trouble logging in, click on Forgot Username or Password and follow the steps. Or create a new account if you don't have one. When you're ready, click Sign In and You're In. If you still need assistance, you can contact your campus library. Um, so that was just a quick little overview of, of accessing the databases, but you did get to see um, how you could search for the databases within those over 110 databases that we subscribe to, um, the various ways that you can search for them. So I'm going to um, just come over here. I'm going to split my screen now so that we can conduct a search ourselves and kind of walk through the databases. So I'm going to try to split the screen and tell me how comfortable this, this is. And if you can, think of a class maybe that you um, had recently or a topic that you might have been working on um, so that we can conduct a search. Okay, and you can go ahead and put that in the chat. Um, just think about a topic that we could go ahead and do, do use as an example. Sorry. So let me go ahead and with this. All right, so what we're going to take a look at, I'm not seeing any feedback on the chat. It's not too tiny. I'll leave it like this. If this is too tiny, I can make this a little larger. It's okay. All right, so the reason I wanted to keep this one open if possible was just so you can kind of just see um, the basic the basics, I guess, to looking um, using the databases. All right. Um, the first thing that I usually teach students is to do a little preliminary research on their topic beforehand so that you can be armed with at least some knowledge on the topic, a bit about um, what keywords you might um, want to use for your search as well. If you go into the databases trying to do that preliminary research and just trying to get familiar with your topic, it can be pretty daunting because a lot of the information you find through the databases is heavy, you know, research, um, kind of heavy studies, very specific studies that are done. And it can be 
a little bit too much um, or a little bit too specific, or sometimes maybe just not quite on the path that you wanted to go on, right? So doing a little preliminary research is a good idea to begin with. And that can look like a basic Google search and ending up on Wikipedia. That's totally fine because what we're going to do is then go on the databases and armed with those keywords is find some more reliable scholarly information that will that will most likely kind of validate what we've already found and the bit of information we've um, already gathered about that topic. So does anyone have a topic that they'd like to uh, share with us so that we can use it as an example. Anyone at all? <laughs> if not, I could use this as an opportunity to show you how to browse topics as well. So we can do that. All right, looks like that's like what we're going to do. So um, this will be another opportunity to show you a different database um, also. So again, typically I would have a topic. I would do some Google searching just to find some keywords to then head over into the database with, right? A bit of a plan. I have this topic. I want to touch upon, you know, A, B, and C, right? Um, but let's say that you're really not too sure what you want to talk about. Let's say your professor is giving you the freedom of selecting your topic. Um, so you're ready to do some research on what topics are available out there, what you could talk about. There is a database there for you that could help you with this. There are websites also that can help you with this, but let's head over to the databases, right? So on our learning resources page, which you can get to by simply going to the MDC website and heading over to this little um, hamburger icon here, under academics, right? Under academics, you'll see libraries. That will take you right here to the library homepage. I'll go ahead and put it in the chat so you guys have it and can follow along, right? That's the homepage. What we're going to do is hit, click on databases right here, all right? And from here, again, this is a little bit of a squished screen, but here are those options that you saw in the video. You can narrow down these 113 databases by subject or by type. So rather than scrolling endlessly and reading these little descriptions to try to understand what, what is available through each one, you could just designate what kind of databases you're looking for. So let's say you were looking for databases specifically on film and video. You can do that. Let's say you were looking um, at arts and philosophy. You can do that too. All right. We have ones for medicine and health, um, biology, um, a lot of other ones. Okay. You do have the option also to look at the databases and organize them by type. So let's say you needed um, some recent news stories to maybe provide some examples um, that tie into your topic. We do have databases that provide you access to local newspapers as well as um, national newspapers. Uh, we have the New York Times as well here that will provide you access to um, current stories. So this one very specifically tells you that it covers the dates from January 1985 to current, while this one, this historical New York Times database, will provide you with uh, content from 1851 to 2014 specifically. So there's a bit of overlap, but this one's more historical. So it's definitely worth your time to read the descriptions to have a better idea if one database is better suited to you versus another one. Some are pretty clear to understand what they are, others are not so clear. So here we have the Sun Sentinel, Noble Herald, all of this. If you guys are ever scrolling through Instagram or any social media and you see an interesting story and you know that if you, you know, go on and click on the story to read more about it, you might hit that paywall. Just know you have free access to a lot of these databases, uh, to a lot of these newspapers. You could just head over to the database, click on the Miami Herald, and in this way, have access to that story without having to pay for a subscription, okay? Or having to find the physical newspaper somewhere. You do have this option here for yourselves, okay? Did you guys know that this is how you can access the, um, the Mummy Herald? No? Yeah. So this is totally here for you. You can look by date. Um, sometimes it takes a little longer to update. Other times it's pretty... Uh, quick, you can check it out right here. So this was yesterday. So here are the, the individual stories. You do have the option to also view this um, as you would like an actual newspaper. So like the image 
of the pages is also available to you, but um, here are specifically the stories. Okay. So that's one of the databases. Let me head back over here. All right. So those are types. Other types that are included here are ones on controversies, are databases that can provide you with data and statistics, um, ones that can provide you with videos, for example. Lots of different types. So not so much about the information that's in them or the, the topics, but the type of information, the format. Okay. So over here, Yes, you can read your news now. Yes, without having to pay. So over here under controversies, the one I wanted to show you um, is opposing viewpoints and also issues and controversies. Specifically, what I wanted to show you is how you can browse topics since we don't have one. So when I head, head over to issues and controversies, I'm going to open this up. Okay. And what this is going to do is it's going to, um, I have automatic access to the databases because I had already signed in. You guys should be hitting that that um, login page. So in here, what we have are um, a number of popular topics or pop topics you're seeing in the, in the media. You're going to see here one specific one that's being highlighted. This one is should religion play a role in public schools. That's the big one for right for today or this week. Below that, we have some popular um, articles that have been in the news lately that have a lot of um, you know, pro and con sides to it. So these are really good for like argumentative essays, um, different viewpoints, things like that. So you'll see those here and there's more if you kind of scroll through them. And then here, you it kind of keeps um, stepping back further and further and further and getting a little bit more broad. So it starts off very, very specific and then it keeps taking a step back. So popular issues will be income inequality, reproductive rights, and then, you know, it'll keep going. Past that, you'll see all issues by subjects. And this is how you can really start browsing. So if you just have an idea that you might want to research something about education in schools or the environment, um, global issues, you can just basically um, click on any of these. And in this way, just kind of keep narrowing it down and narrowing it down and maybe hopefully find something that you can um, be really interested in so that when you're doing research, um, it's not a chore, but something you're actually enjoying, right? So here we have um, a list of issues basically within the energy and environment topic, okay? So here we have um, the Keystone Pipeline, we have pollution, uh, oil pipelines again, renewable energy, uh, the Green New Deal, extinction, energy policy, climate change, clean air act, all this different stuff. Okay. If I click on any one of these, again, it gets a little bit more specific. So now we have specific um, arguments or topics that are going on related to this larger topic, right? Here are some, some of those right here. It'll provide you with what the supporters are arguing and what are the opponents arguing. Um, never think that, you, you know, it's all just black and white, right and wrong. Um, you know, people support a lot of these things or oppose them for a reason. And when you read through these, you never know, it might actually change your mind. Um, and it's always a good idea to kind of know what your opponent is going to be armed with, what kind of information they're going to be armed with, so that if you find yourself in an argument or um, are writing an argumentative essay, you can better formulate your argument, right? So, up here is basically the overview of the topic first. And then again, these are like the more specific topics that maybe you could, you know, borrow a little bit from and get an idea of what you could write. Okay, this database is an example, not all of it, but um, like this, what you're seeing here, this is an example of a database that's creating their own content. So issues and controversies and opposing viewpoints, they gather a lot of this research and information um, and then create these, um, these articles. So if I were to click on this one, for example, you can see that. So this, this article here, it's all written by this database or the, you know, the people behind this database, but they do provide you at the very end of the article with the, um, with the bibliography so that you can see exactly where all this information is coming from. Okay, so, sorry. Here's the article, you've reached a conclusion. Past that, you have um, 
additional sources to find additional information. It provided you, it provides you with some keywords where you can maybe even go to another database and conduct additional research. A bibliography is available right here where a lot of the information came from, where it was compiled from. So although they created this article, you can clearly see it was well researched and where we, where all the information came from. And it's recent, all of that. You can see that here. Beyond that, there's additional information that you could use. Um, wait, let me go back to the top for a second. I wanted to show you these pages. So beyond the bibliography, you also have a chronology and also by the numbers, so statistics related to the topic as well. So this, this all falls, I think, under like the various tools and um, benefits of using the databases because you have all this additional information related to the topic that you didn't have to like actively seek out, right? It's all part of this one article, this one page. You can get a clear timeline of this, what was this again? Uh, key events in the climate, in climate change. Okay, so maybe like different laws and different acts that have passed, things like that. All right. So this is issues and controversies. Any questions about this one for right now? Because this is basically um, just kind of a quick little review of how you can browse topics to better identify maybe a, a topic you'd like to research. So I think we'll go ahead and use this as our example. We'll do some climate change and we'll look at um, we'll look at what the U.S. government is doing to combat it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and um, I might leave that one open, but I'm going to head back over to the list of databases. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this out, okay, because the next uh, step over here is actually using some keywords. It's um, looking at the advanced search options and so forth, okay? So now let's take a look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and use um, our second database that's available here. It's Academic Search Complete. I'm going to open this one up because this is um, very typical of just um, a standard database with a lot of limiters that it provides you and filters. And this one's really excellent in the sense that it is a multidisciplinary database. So it's not specifically geared toward uh, film or art or medicine, science, anything in particular. Um, it has a lot of everything. So let's start with this one. You will also see that this one will produce many results for us because it does provide you access with um, provide you access to over 5,300 full text periodicals, 4,000 of those being peer reviewed journals. It also has um, abstracts, uh, 9,300 journals, and various other publications. So there's quite a bit and quite a quite a timeline, a time frame that it provides access to. Okay, so when we go into Academic Search Complete, all right, the database and all of the EBSCO ones specifically, so this one by this um, publisher will, uh, creator, will look similar. The, the way you can distinguish this one from a different database is because the title is right up here. It says Academic Search Complete. So right here you have your search bars so that you can type in your keywords. You can even indicate, you know, if you're looking at if what you're adding in is an author, title, name, a subject term, all of this. But for the most part, I think we're fine with just leaving this on its own and letting it search it as a keyword. Below that, you will see many options. The reason you're seeing this is because we are in the advanced search option, which is another tool I recommend that you utilize whenever you end up on a search page. If you have an option to choose an advanced search over a basic search, do so because you don't know what kind of options are available to you to better focus your search before you even click that search bar, that search button. Okay, so let's go ahead and put in some keywords. All right, so we had climate change, correct? You will see suggestions that come up as you start typing. I would definitely recommend pausing, look through these because they could be very helpful. I'm gonna go ahead and just put climate change for now. If you're not sure what else to put, how exactly to phrase the fact that we wanna look at what the US government is doing, um, we could pause for a minute and either, you know, look at what was coming up when I was typing this, 
you can go back to how, wherever you were doing your preliminary research from. In our case, we were actually looking at issues and controversies. So let's go back over there for a minute. And the key, the, um, the keywords were here. So let me go back to them, see what's available. Um, it did give us a few, the names of a few things like the, this deal, this act, an agreement, you know, we have a few different things here. So we could specifically search for that, for one of these, um, or we could just kind of leave it open for now and then get more specific. You could even decide to maybe write a paper about and cover these, you know, two or three things. These are all ideas, right, that you now have because you've done a little bit of preliminary, preliminary research before getting into these databases. For right now, I'll go ahead and just put U.S. government. I think it wants spaces. Let's do that. All right, I'll put the U.S. government right here. This should be okay. You see how it's written a few different ways here. It's without the periods here. There's no space between them here. You know, it's like, and then I think on the other page it had a space. So that could matter. Um, I'm going to just go with this and see what happens. I could also just write out the word and see if that would be clearer. United States government. Okay. Again, more suggestions pop up. Anyone else want to suggest maybe a last keyword or maybe we can um, add it in afterwards. So start thinking about it and put it in the chat. Maybe a third keyword that we can add related to this topic. Okay. So now we have our limiters right down here. All right, so we're, we're looking, we, we have our keywords. We looked at the suggestions that popped up. This is where we have to think really, really critically about our topic and our information needs. What exactly do we need? What exactly are we trying to seek out? You need to have an idea about that, um, again, before you head in here. Now you're ready to look at your, your limiters. Look at the options to help limit your results. When I say think critically, I'm talking about you know, are there are there guidelines that your professor has given you? Do they only want information that's um, within the last few years? Do you need to have information that's only within the last few years because anything older is going to be either obsolete or not as reliable? Um, it might not be relevant anymore. Or maybe you do need some historical content because you're doing a comparison. You need to think about all these things, right? And then once you come over here, you can actually decide that, okay? Um, if you need to have recent information, because again, climate change changes frequently, a lot of these acts and laws and um, programs change as well. So maybe you do wanna look at what currently is being done, not historically what's been done, but maybe what the US is doing right now. That, if you wanna take that angle, then definitely worth putting a start and an end year for this research, okay? Uh, we definitely want to look at all of our full text information. We don't want to have any results that we can't open or access um, for any reason. So putting full text will eliminate the ones that we can't access. Peer reviewed, this might go back to what your professor might be requesting. If they're um, specifically wanting peer reviewed research, that's going to be an option for you to click on here so that all that you're seeing is peer reviewed. And a lot of those maybe just like news stories will be eliminated because that's not peer reviewed research. That's just gonna be, you know, um, you know, news story that was on the TV or on social media, something like that. Okay. Uh, there's a few other options as well. Um, I don't think you need to worry about these too much, but just know that they're available to you if you need them. Okay. For right now, I'm gonna go ahead and leave these blank for a moment because I wanna show you that if you, don't use them now, or if you find that you need to add additional limiters later, you do have the option for that once you're on your results page. So I'm going to go ahead and click search. All right. And what I'm going to see now is my results page. Okay. And we're looking at this last piece here about adjusting our keywords and limiters based on the results. So now based on what we're seeing in our results, we can better adjust to maybe 
bring down these 1,273 results to maybe maybe just a few hundred, maybe a few dozen, um, to just be a little bit more targeted and um, closer to exactly what you were looking for. And that way you have just less to look through, right? So I'm going to go ahead and open this window a little bigger now so that you can see all the options, okay? So has anyone given any thought to a third keyword maybe to better specify what we need so we can lower this thousand results okay, put it in the chat so we can focus this a little bit better um you do also have those limiters that we saw on the previous page available to you again here on the left so let's go ahead and apply that full text like we wanted so instead of 1200 results now we're at 973 we eliminated a few um let's say we do want to look at only the most recent years and not what we've done historically but more recently so let's put what do you guys think 10 years 15 less how many years do you think we should put five all right let's take a look at five if you ever end up with too few results we can always back up a little bit. So let's let's see what happens. So you can always use this little scrolly thing, but we can always just type it in. So what is this? 2000, we'll do, we'll do 17 because we're not that far into 2023 or only halfway, I guess. Let's do 2017. We're only at 237 results now. So that really narrowed it down. Again, if the results are not quite what we needed because we narrowed it down too much, either with a keyword or with a limiter, you could always remove it right here. You could always change it and maybe open this up if you'd like to as well. Um, those are always options. You'll see here that we have a, bare, a variety of different results. We've got some academic journals. Uh, we have some type of electronic resource here. This might be like a website or something. Um, this here, we have some videos as well. Academic journals. Here we have a newspaper. Here's a periodical. Oops. So we have information coming to us from a different, a variety of different formats, right? In a variety of different formats. If I were to click peer reviewed, you'll see that we'll have only our academic journals to help us now. See that? I'm going to remove that limiter because that's a little bit too limited. And I don't think it's too necessary right now to do, only look at that. All right, so I removed it. We're back at 237. Okay. If this is, if the results are okay, no need to add another keyword. But if you'd like to, you could always put in um, a new word. So I could put like maybe laws. Um, you can see here that there's other words like or policy and policies or cases or legislation. So you'll see a lot of options. Um, know that whether you use the word and or or is going to matter. If you want your results to contain the word laws and policies, like you're looking for any results that contain both of those, um, you're going to want to use the word and. But if you are okay with whether they use whether the article is using the words law or policy or legislation it doesn't matter which one of those words they're interchangeable to you or maybe you want results that deal with climate change the united states government and policy or climate change united states government and laws then use these ors because that's what it'll do okay it'll provide a search that contains the combination of these three words here these three words or these three words so what this actually does is it will expand the search right because whether the article is using this word this word or this word you'll get that result okay when you put and it's going to basically require that both of those words be available so you'll have less results okay if that's not clear, don't worry. Um, that's a little bit more and probably, and there's another workshop on that um, that we can go through, or you could always make one-on-one -on -one appointments with librarians to go over that in more detail. But now we did the search again, right? So we narrowed it down because we're now looking for a third um, combination. And now we have 125 results instead of the 200, okay? And 
what you can um what you can do now is I want to look at the the tools available to you so I'm just going to go ahead and click on this first one all right just to go over the tools real quick when you click on an article you'll have access to the art the full article over here on the left you can click on the html or the pdf version of it you will have information about the article such as who the author is where this article was published it's in this article uh, this journal the date of that journal the volume number all those little details about it you'll also have subject terms that are related to this topic to this article um, and this one actually provides you with keywords related to this topic or to the article, I'm sorry. So the keywords that are tagged within this article, okay? The abstract is available here. So uh, basically a summary of what the article covers. It's available in a variety of different languages. Also, that's a bonus there. We have it in Spanish and Chinese. And over here on the right, you'll see those tools that I mentioned, which you will also see once you open the article. You can save the article, you can email it to yourself, which I recommend as a way to save it for yourself, to maybe share it with a group, um, any of those things, because it'll provide you with the link that you'll be able to just click on and get back to the article easily. You will also have this button to, to cite. So when you click on cite, it'll open up this box and you'll be able to cite this article in a variety of different um, styles. So most commonly, we'll either be using APA style. So here's that APA style citation and MLA. And here's that MLA citation right here. Most librarians will still recommend that you compile your works cited or reference page and still meet with us to go over this. But for the most part, there it is. It might require maybe a little bit of tweaking once, once you have it on that page for yourself. Um, but the basics are all there and for the most part they are correct maybe sometimes they might have like all caps somewhere but other than that they've been pretty good okay and someone put that um another good thing about the ebsco databases is that you can actually search um, all the databases as well like all the ebsco databases um, and that's true up here you can also do that from our home page over here just by clicking advanced library search and you can actually search all the databases at once um, not just EBSCO or not just one kind but all of them and that's something that we can also teach you to do um, if you're struggling with one or two databases and, and you're, with your topic in general maybe it's a little bit too specific and you're not getting too many hits um, working with your librarian we can show you all these other alternative ways of uh, doing searches and finding research mm -hmm. Well, thank you for bringing it up. So, um, so going back to this presentation, <laughs> um, we did we we've now adjusted our limiters. We've looked at our results page. Um, I did already go through this now. The um, taking advantage of the tools available through the databases, such as emailing it to yourself as a way of saving it, citing your resources so that you're not having to create it on your own like you would with like a Google result um you have those citing options on most databases they might be located in a different spot within the database but uh, from what i've seen all the databases have that somewhere okay and then the last one i forgot to mention was actually permalink so you want to make sure that if you're ever sharing the hyperlink to the the resource that you found that you're grabbing that permalink versus the link at the top of the page so let me show you that difference so rather than like here's this article rather than grabbing this link up here you don't want to do that you want to make sure that you're grabbing the permalink which is an option here this is the link that you want to share so let's say your professor is only asking for the links or maybe you want to share it with your group or a friend or even me if you want to make an appointment with me and you're, you want to talk about um, an article this would be the link that you share this is the link that I'll be easily able to open um, and view the article Otherwise, this link will take you through EBSCO. It requires you to log in through your institution. It's a lot more clunky and not 100%. Um, not so make sure you're grabbing the permalink whenever possible. It'll either show you this little icon here that looks like a link, or it'll actually say the word permalink. Okay, so I wanted you guys to kind of try to do the same thing and see if you ran into any 
obstacles or any challenges, um, and then we can address them. But we are a little short on time. So feel free to go ahead and do a search. Or if you have been following along and did one on your own, um, that'd be great. Go ahead and if you don't mind sharing the permalink there so I can, I can see what you found. Um, that would be excellent. But also, if you just have questions, go ahead and put it in the chat. Um, thoughts, um, questions, observations, anything, feel free to put it in the chat so we can kind of take a look at, at that specific thing that you're wondering about. Um, and then I will leave you guys with um, an overview of just maybe like two other databases that I wanted to show you that are vastly different than the ones we looked at. Um, just so you can kind of see how different a database can look, right? It doesn't have to look so heavily academic, right? And then I will also leave you with um, some links that I'll put in the chat so that you have our, um, not just our homepage, but um, how to make appointments with librarians and our tutors. And also um, I'll share a survey link at the end, okay? So before I, I put all those in the chat or while I do that, let me open up the databases again. Okay, so I can show you those other ones I wanted to share real quick. Actually, let me do this, do this. All right, so over here on the databases, right? Uh, the ones I wanted to show you are, right here in the subject, if you head to art and philosophy, we have this super amazing, excellent database that I, I don't think too many people know about. So I, I like to kind of highlight it. It's called Digital Theater Plus. How many of you guys are interested in theater or maybe have had to do assignments in theater and have no idea about theater um, or where to find information about theater? So either way. So this is Digital Theater Plus. Um, it's super awesome if you haven't heard about it. Um, you can just watch productions by the Royal Shakespeare Company. Just click on it and it's there for you. Um, this is an amazing resource. It has so much in here. Okay. Um, you can search for theater by genre. So let's say you're interested in, let's go with Gothic. That sounds interesting. Uh, let's go, let's say we're interested in this literary genre, right? Gothic. You can scroll down and we have some productions right here. So we've got Frankenstein, Dracula, Jane Eyre. That's one of my favorites. You can just wander through here and watch these wonderful productions of um, these literary classics, different plays, um, so much. And there's also additional resources available to you. So they also um, dig deep into a lot of these um, productions and not just the productions, I'm sorry, but the actual um, literature too. So here on Jane Eyre, we're looking at themes and symbols within the, the novel, right? Same thing with Frankenstein. So this could even help you beyond just the actual production of it, but the looking at the actual novel, right? We've got study guides. It's looking at poems as well, things related to this genre. Um, let's see what else we can do. Uh, let's say we go to comedy. We've got even more here. We've got Midsummer Night's Dream. There's like so many. This one had a list of 129 productions. So really cool resource here. We've got musicals from Broadway. And it's all here for you to enjoy. And I believe, let me just click on one to see. Um, let's see, let me see, let me see. We've got video resources. We've got all the details here about the resource. Um, I'm trying to find those tools such as citation. Let me see. No, not there. Well, we do have the pieces right here. So we can definitely create the citation ourselves, but I did think it was here somewhere. Might need to dig a little deeper. But for the most part, you can just kind of see what's available. All right, did you guys know this existed? I'm gonna take that as a no. Um, another one that's available to you guys is 
um, one on ebooks, like we mentioned. Let me see if I can pull that up. So over here under types, let's say you were looking for ebooks. We have a few actually. I can provide you with ebooks. So maybe you need to have to read something, a novel or something for a class, or maybe even a textbook or something, like an additional resource um, that you have to have along with your textbook. You can double check in a lot of these databases to see if there's access to it. Um, specifically this EBSCO ebook collection here, we try to um, support a lot of the classes with the with uh, resources by adding it to this collection here. So I would definitely check this one out. And then also OverDrive over here. This is going to be like a lot of bestsellers and everything, but this is also a database that you can use. Um, and it's a database of popular novels. And these are available to you just as easily as the other one. You simply click on the title and you can, oh, this one's actually checked out already. So you can actually place a hold on it and read it or listen to it if it's an audiobook as soon as it's, as it's available. All right. And then besides these, you know, fun ones, we did already take a look at newspaper databases and we took a look at um, the ones that create their own contact uh, content, like the issues and controversies one. Okay. The video databases, we also have those. So we have a lot of uh, ones that are here to assist with medical type um, classes and courses. We also have ones that have a lot of documentaries that you could probably watch that fit with a lot of the themes that you might be uh, learning in class. So classics in world cinema, Oscar winners, a lot going on in here. All right, any questions from you guys before we wrap up? That's good. All right, I'm gonna leave you all in the chat with our link to meet with tutors as well as librarians, the ones that you see on the page here on the screen. So take a look at the, the chat so you have those links. And then lastly, I want to make sure I leave you with this little um, survey link so that you have that. No problem. Again, if you have any questions or want to follow up on anything, I'll leave you with my email as well. We could um, go ahead and meet and have, you know, one-on-one -on -one meeting and go over any specific questions you have. Okay. If you haven't put in your username in the chat at the start of the session, please do it at, do it now. So um, I can add you to this workshop. You can get credit for it if your professors are providing any kind of credit for attending workshops. And if you have a moment, I did put in the survey in the chat as well. Okay, I'll stay on for a few minutes as you guys um, just wrap that up there. Just click on the survey link and your username, please. Thank you. Thank you all for attending today.